Even though Daniel got on the box this weekend with the second and third overall, Michelle was day drunk and cussing around the children, so all the footage of the race from her angle was completely unusable. This being the case, we thought it'd be better for the viewers to just combine the remaining races from this weekend into one quick video montage so we can move on to the better quality content. We'll still add our takeaway from the weekend towards the end, including our screw ups, so be sure to stick around for that. But given the limited footage, there's just no way to stitch the full races together. Nonetheless, if you dig the content and you wanna come along for the ride, especially for the better quality videos coming, be sure to like and subscribe. Maybe say hi in the comments. These two went at it pretty good through the whole race. Daniel would start to pull away a bit, and then by the next corner, third place would be right on his butt. It was a good race. And unfortunately, we missed the pass because it was on the back side of the track, but eventually the kid got him. Daniel did everything he could to pass back, including illegally crossing the lines right here, but it was a great battle for second place. I was really happy with him. Get to the inside, dude! No! No! Shit! Oh, it's so close! The 50 class is so funny. Quick side note, one of the things that I'm really proud of Daniel for is the fact that he's not one of those kids that sits on his ass and cries when he crashes. There's been more than a few times that I've seen flaggers run over to him expecting to have to help, but by the time they get there, he's already back up and starting his bike so he can get back into the race. I think he realized right here that that outside line was a little bit faster. We learned a lot this weekend, specifically two things that are easy to implement and have a big impact. First, don't buy all black gear if you plan to ride in the summer. And second, if you'd like to be somewhat competitive beyond the 50 beginner class, make sure to adjust your damn clutch. We also learned a few things in the broader sense as well though. Things that were easy to recognize after the fact, but much harder to see in the moment. First, have your kids race the fastest kids they can safely race, even if they're in dead last. By the time our first few race weekends were completed, we'd met quite a few parents. One of the couples, I wish I could remember their names because they were super nice, told us they estimated their boy got a full third faster simply by having him race in the faster open class. I'd heard that faster, more experienced riders have a tendency to pull slower, less experienced riders around the track, but I'd never seen it in action. Having Daniel race in the open class this weekend, even with the stock clutch settings, had this same effect, which you'll see in the coming videos. Secondly, and you'll see an example of this when we upload the Passes and Crashes version for this weekend. But be sure to support the people and brands that support the kids. 
Back when I was still promoting MMA, I once had a conversation with Greg Jackson, arguably one of the greatest MMA coaches of all time, and he told me something that's always stuck with me. He said the only gyms that ever lasted, much less thrive, were the ones that built their foundation around their kids. Now, I know it's a different sport, but from what I've seen so far, this principle holds true for the business of motocross too. It's an expensive sport, and I know that the shops, tracks, promoters, and vendors all have to fight just to earn a living, and I'm definitely glad that they choose to do so. But that said, I also have to remember that as their consumer, my resources aren't unlimited, so I have to make sure that the money I do spend goes directly to the brands and people that do everything they can to support the longevity of the sport. To put it simply, if I want the sport to be here for my children's children, my money needs to go to the names and faces I see at the track on race days. Anyways, thanks again to everyone for viewing. I think we've had something like 80,000 views in the last week or two, which is pretty cool given the limited footage we've had to work with. And hopefully, now that we have some better content to work with, we'll be able to provide you with some better quality videos moving forward. Thanks again for bearing with us in the meantime. If you want to come along for the ride, be sure to like and subscribe. We're only going to get better. Cheers.